Good activity so far. Um, yesterday there was a big male at the bait he didn't eat. We have about 10 pictures of him on the trail camera. That male is at least 140 pounds. Um, but he didn't come back last night so hopefully he will come back tonight. We'll see what the baits tell us tomorrow morning. So just tell me a little bit about um, your experience about practicing and what equipment you have for this leopard hunt. Tell me how ready you are. Okay. Um, I picked for this leopard hunt a, a Matthews DXT bow, which is a bow that Matthews came out about three bows ago. Um, one reason that I picked this bow is that it's short, the axle to axle length is short, which is good when you're hunting in a pop-up blind or any other kind of blind. It's not hitting the top or bottom and you have plenty of room to maneuver with it. Um, leopard hunting takes some pretty specialized equipment. Uh, most of it is done at night here in South Africa and um, so your practice has to be geared towards that. One thing on my bow, I used a G5 sight and the reason that I picked that is it has an internal light, meaning that the light does not shine just on the pins, it goes through the fiber optics. You can see on the front, even with the fiber optics, I've taped it up so that no light shows towards the towards the front. I'm the only one that sees the light. I used a big big peep sight again for shooting at night so you can see more of the target area. Um, a kisser button to 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 give you the, the same anchor point every, every time. Uh, my rest is a quality archery designs or QAD um, ultra rest. It's a it's a flip down rest. This one is very quiet when you put it up everything needs to be quiet and I also taped some felt onto the site so that when you draw the arrow you don't hear it being drawn and then as far as the arrow I'm just using a an Easton axis arrow these are the uh, the 500 uh, level arrow and a rage two blade broadhead um, it's the two blade two inch broadhead for a big cutting surface one thing about the broadhead and the poundage you don't you don't need 100 pounds to to kill a leopard with 70 pounds is more than enough even even lighter and a heavier arrow if you're going to hit the shoulder blade you're not going to penetrate anyway with any bow we have the experience with a 90 pound bow didn't penetrate the leg bone so you stay away from the shoulder anyway so a big cutting diameter broad it as big as possible works great if you shoot it a little far back cuts a big hole and you will recover your leopard. One thing about um, leopard hunting, again, it, it is very specialized, kind of a technical hunt, so the preparation is a little bit different than most big game hunts that you go on. For this particular one, um, I bought a, a foam leopard target, and I built a stand to shoot from 5 feet high to 15 feet high, because you never know exactly how high the bait is going to be in the tree. And then I put a red brake light and hooked it to a battery right above that that leopard target. So I would get in my backyard when it got when it got dark and practice shooting at night with that red light. And I think that's very important. Shooting at night is a is a lot different than shooting in the in the daytime. Um, I probably shot 500 arrows in practice, and I feel pretty confident now. But every even now at night, it's it's a completely different ball game. So I would say practice in as dark a conditions as you can and, and be completely confident in your in your equipment. Yeah, you, you practice really hard. The way you practice it's exactly how it's going to happen. It's going to be pitch black dark, red light ab above the leopard. You're going to be about anything from 14 to 20 yards away from the bait and practice in any those range you should you should do fine. Good thing about a lighted knock then we, then we don't have to guess where the arrow went. We will see exactly on the replay of the camera where the arrow went. Then we know if we can follow up that same night or we have to leave it overnight. All depends on kind of shots. Mark, are you ready? I'm ready. Right, there was a hit last night on one of our baits. The truck is loaded. All the equipment we need. Blinds, listening devices, red lights, flashlights, guns, bows. 
It's about um, 1230 right now, so we're gonna hit that way and start building the blind. Hopefully we'll be done by 3, so that the place can rest up. 5 o'clock we'll be in the blind, and I think we'll have good luck tonight. I'm gonna listen with the listening devices here, phones. If I hear something walking, whatever body part I can find closest to me, I will do the walk with my fingers on you. Okay. It can be a rabbit walking by, it can be a bush pig, it can be a honey badger, it can be a leopard. If you, if you feel this, you don't move, you like freeze in that position, whatever position you are. Okay. Then you don't move. <coughs> and then I will listen further on, and when I start hearing eating, crunching, maybe you will hear it with your ear, but sometimes you don't hear it, I will do this. Okay. Sometimes it's on your leg, when I squeeze your leg like that, that means the leopards are eating. And then when I did that, then you come slowly up in your position, get your bow in your hand, knock your arrow, put your release on, you just wait. There, from there on you will see the light coming on, and then I will have to look first if it's the right one, then I will tell you softly, take him. Okay. So we're right here at the blind now. From now on we're going to work very quietly. This leopard is not far because the last pictures we took from him it was 5 o'clock this morning. On this blind we're going to use a, a, a pop-up blind. It works very well, we're just going to brush it in and they won't even know this blind is here. This is from the inside of the blind. I'm videoing out of the shooting hole now. The leopard will be right on that branch there. It's going to be a little bit of a quartering away shot, almost broadside. At this moment the bait's higher. But I'm, tonight for the shooting I'm going to put it lower because the honey badgers was too active on this bait so I put it higher to make it difficult for the honey badgers. Right be between us and the bait there is a a ditch, very deep ditch, about 20, 20, 25 feet. No water in the ditch, but it's good to have ob obstacle between us. This is the view from the leopards where he will feed tonight. Hein is here putting up the red light that will illuminate the leopard. We also have to put a listening device which will allow him to be able to hear and let us know when the leopard's here. When it's over with, this blind will be completely brushed in so that all that you can see are those two openings right there which will be pitch black dark. This is the bait, which is a donkey quarter. The leopard fed last night and then for tonight we will move it straight down onto this limb to give us Pretty much a straight across shot. It should be a little quartering away, which is what you want. That is the red light that gives us some illumination so that we can see when the leopard's here. This is the uh, the listening device that Hein will listen with throughout the night and be able to hear the leopard crunching on the bones and the meat here from the donkey. The hide is almost complete with the branch, branches packing on it. As you can see there is a door where we go in, into the hide. And then the rest of the hide is packed with branches. Okay, as you can see the blind finished now. It's exactly 3 o'clock at this moment. We're going to go out of the area. About 4.30 we'll come back. Sneak in. Close the door, then we'll put some brush on the back. 5 o'clock we must be settled. Because normally it's 5 o'clock they will start walking around here. So we just get everything finalized and we'll go. Okay, we are in the blind right now. We're getting ready. 
it's like 22.5 we're just gonna close the door right now Mac is gonna lay on a mattress here and me and Sean is gonna sit on a chair that's it. gonna be shooting all over there is the bait After 12, oh my God. <laughs> we were sleeping, honey badgers, um, Janet's in and out. We had the leopard roaring very early, and when they normally do that, they're not hungry. That's why it came so late. And, and you make a perfect shot after sleeping. Tell me what a big male came in. We've hunted hard this whole, this whole time. I was dead asleep right here. There's nothing quite like getting woken up out of a sleep and looking up in the tree and seeing this huge cat sitting there and you have to make the shot. Luckily, I think I made a good one. He ran around to our right. I think we heard him go down in the in the stream bed that we're we're sitting on. But oh my gosh, thank you, Lord. Back. It's about uh, 15 minutes now. I think we just take all the stuff to the truck. That should take us another 10 minutes. Sounds good. I hope he's down. Okay, Mag, it's been um, about 40 minutes now. I think we can go and look. Let's go. Come, guy. Mag, just stay next to me. Not behind me, right now. A lot of blood. Good blood. That looks very good. A lot of blood on this. A lot of blood. We've been tracking a lot of blood. It smells good. It's just a bit of us. <laughs> very good. Very, very, very good. <laughs> Look at his head. Show <laughs> Gabra. What a leopard. He went pretty far. I was oh, worried. Yes, he did. I was too. If we found it another spot where he stopped, I would have turned around and come back tomorrow morning. But like I said, they're not that mad exactly when after you shot him. Then the next morning. You see? Nice big cat. Big head, eh? Golly. Is he pretty? He is beautiful. Beautiful. He has a huge head on him. Nice body. Perfect, Mac. Check my hand. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, great hunt. Very um, exciting. It, it, there's nothing like waking up and, and seeing a big male leopard in the tree. But uh, we finally got our cat. and. I couldn't be happier. Huge male, beautiful, beautiful animal. I just want to congratulate you. Thank you very much. On a beautiful leopard, this one is going to be very high in the record book for Bo. You make a perfect shot on him. Shot him far back enough. Stay away from the leg. The results was there. If it was like eight inches behind the crease, it will give you room to stay away from the leg. And he only went like Straight across from the bait he went maybe 200 yards, but the, we, we took about 300 yards to get to him through rivers and things. But um, 30 minutes he was, we, were, we found him after we shot him 30-40 minutes. And um, once again, congratulations on this beautiful leopard. Thank you very much. I couldn't be happier. He's a, he's a great trophy.